you guys are not going to believe this. I have another extremely gracious and generous subscriber who sent me a knife to send to Toad Sticker. Uh, as you guys know, Toad Sticker is recovering from some medical issues, and we sold a bunch of his knives a few weeks ago to help him pay the bills for that stuff. And I think this is the second or third subscriber to the Apostle P channel who has just sent me a knife to send on to Toad Sticker, and this is the latest. This is from uh, from my subscriber Chris, the owner of that beautiful Knives of Alaska Featherlight Hunter. Let's see. And what do we have tonight? We have item number 13007, a 4138 stainless steel full size side buster in navy blue. Isn't that cool? And guys, this is a big knife. Uh, a lot larger knife than the Great Eastern Cutlery side buster. Uh, that Campfire Talk sent me to sharpen a month or so ago. Uh, this knife closed is 4 and 11 16 inches long with a blade of 3 and 5 8 inches, a nice robust sort of bullnose drop point. Very much the same blade shape as the GEC Sodbuster we looked at. This one in case is True Sharp Stainless Steel. We think that is 420HC or something close to that. The handle is constructed of a brass linered frame, a carbon steel backspace, or at least it appears to be carbon steel from the patina that's developing on it in the inside. Might be stainless, but I kind of think not. The uh, handle scales are a navy blue Delrin. Look at the size of that massive brass pivot that comes all the way through the covers and two brass pins hold the knife together in the back. Pretty interesting knife and man a large beater working man's knife. Sod Buster is the name and you can just imagine this knife riding in the back pocket of a farmer at the turn of the 20th century doing whatever tasks need to be done, cutting up whatever needs to be cut up. So it's a big, really ergonomic slip joint folder. No half stop on this one now. Not, uh, this is one of the case models that's missing that feature. Some of them do have it, but not all. Pretty decent action. It did require a little lubrication and breaking in. I think this is about a brand new knife. Um, it didn't appear to have any use on it at all. Now this is a really good example. If you guys want to go back and look at the video of that GEC Sodbuster, um, this is a really good illustration sort of of the those quality differences in fit and finish that you see uh, between the two companies and Although this is a strongly built, robust knife, it is not of the same quality fit and finish as the Great Eastern Cutlery blade was that we looked at a few weeks ago. Um, let's start off by looking at blade centering. As you can see, it is, oh, not significantly, but it's off to the right there a little bit, isn't it? And then where I really see the, uh, the discrepancies is in the sanding of the assembled knife on the Delrin. And there's a great shot if you look at the butt of the knife. See how the right side cover is. It really dives to the center on a much larger radius than the one on the left does. It's even sort of visibly thicker, I think, on the right side. And then if we look at the back spring, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up too well. But right in this area, there is some real sanding irregularity. Got sort of a big low spot there. I'm trying to pick that up for you. I don't know if my light's reflecting so you can see it, but just kind of an odd spot. I think this is a, an area too where the sanding just isn't very symmetrical side to side. 
And I think the area around this pin on this side looks a little different than on this one. Just one of those things, you know, they, uh, these are sort of high volume, inexpensive production cases. And this is one of the, <clears throat> the case models that is not polished, the blade is not polished. It's sort of a machine satin. Um, I don't know if you can, I'm going to try to get the camera to pick this up, but it's, you can almost see chatter marks or tool marks in the satin grind, which I think is kind of interesting. I, I think it'd be cool to see how they actually apply this finish. If you notice, the blade grind is full flat on this knife, which is kind of rare for a case. And it's good to see it on an inexpensive one. Um, and nicely done. I did sharpen this knife. Uh, I, I owed Chris a couple of sharpenings and he decided to spend one of them on Toad Sicker's gift. How cool is that? Uh, well executed sharpening notch. A very tight, almost direct plunge grind on this knife. That's just an extremely well executed Ricasso there, guys. Just perfect. There's another sort of grinding irregularity there on the blade tang. And how did the old uh, 420HC or True Sharp stainless sharpen up? Well, I, I think you guys know, don't you? One thing about this steel, its ability to take an edge is not an issue. You hear that silent, <laughs> the silent blade going through there? Just amazingly sharp. Get my mess out of the way. And that's sort of my uh, standard traditional edge grind. One bevel, 18 degrees per side. And then I just sort of, as I'm on that final 2000 grit polishing tape stage on the Edge Pro, I just pick it up um, about a quarter of a degree for a few strokes just to clean off any remaining burr. And then I go to the strop, and this is sort of what we end up with. So I guess there is, man, that's sharp. I guess there is uh, the tiniest of micro bevels just from cleaning up a burr. But uh, guys, that is beyond sharp wow wow I really wasn't aware of that um, every, one, every now and then you get one that just surprises you this would be the one for this week very cool blade hey this one's going to be heading off to Washington tomorrow in the mail but I thought y'all would like to see it So, Ted Sticker, my brother, go stand by the mailbox. <laughs> you got one coming. Grace to you all and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word, and Toad Sticker Sodbuster are sharp. Have a good night, guys.